Hey, hey there, business owner. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Evolution Podcast. This is our weekly episode, and I'm so happy you are here. Let's get started. Hey there, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. I am your host of the Entrepreneur Evolution Podcast, Annette Walter. I have built, grown, sold, acquired, and started multi-million dollar companies, and I am able to help entrepreneurs like you do the same. So I have a special treat for you today. Today is actually a live coaching session from a challenge that I hosted in one of our private Facebook groups. It was actually the September Survive and Thrive Business Coaching Challenge, and it was awesome. Basically what I did is every day at 12, I tuned in and I just coached a live session every single day. And you could catch the replay if you wanted to. In fact, the group's still open if you want to jump in. It's completely free. But I really wanted to share this episode with you today. We talk about generating different types of cash flow, different forms of revenue into your business and being creative and being smart and repackaging things and make sure that you are offering different services and products to your target market and your target audience. So take a listen. I know that you will grab some golden nuggets from this episode and let me know what you think. I love hearing from you. I love your reviews and I am so grateful for all of the five-star ratings and Um, and you hitting subscribe and you sharing this. You are making this podcast grow and we have some really amazing guests in the next coming months. So enjoy the listen. And as always, if you need me, just email me at urock at ievolveconsulting.com. Keep evolving, entrepreneur. Enjoy this session. Okay, how are we? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, join me. You are here. You made it. Okay, so to recap, day one, we talked about the why. And we went back to your original purpose. And part of the homework was writing a letter to your pre-entrepreneur self before you started a business, before you were an entrepreneur. And what advice you would give yourself, okay? What would you let yourself know would be okay? What would you tell yourself to do differently or not to get too hung up on, okay? And we also gave yourself permission. Permission to be a C student, to get things done and don't worry about the perfect, to be messy and to show up in your business, okay? Day two, we progressed into the clarity and the confidence and the courage. All right, so the clarity, we were really narrowing in exactly who we wanted to talk to, who is in our audience, who do we serve, and who is in our community, okay? And I gave the example of being in a crowded location pre-COVID, all right, and talking and yelling in the crowd to someone specifically you wanted to get their attention. If you said, hey, girl with the curly hair, 10 people are going to turn around. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if you say, hey there, Jane Doe, and you want to sell and work with Jane Doe, she's going to turn around. So writing down as part of your homework exactly what your ideal client looked like, okay? Um, we talked about confidence and boosting your confidence and some tactics there with the power pose. And then just having those 20 seconds of ins- insane courage to get you through things, okay? And I even challenge you to do something that took insane courage. Also, part of the task was reaching out to people in your core network and saying, what do you come to me for? When you think of me and my services, what do you come to me for? So getting feedback, okay? We don't get enough feedback in our, inf- in our businesses because we don't ask for it. Okay, when was the last time you asked one of your clients, what more could I do for you? What more would you want to see from me? Okay, so let me take a sip. (coughs) Just a tickle. Sorry about that. Today we are talking about revenue and opportunities, okay? There are so many opportunities out there right now. There is so much cash flowing in our economy right now. I know for some businesses, it may not feel like it. 
some businesses, it may feel like it, but there is cash on the sidelines right now, people. And I am telling you that because I see it and I know it. So I would get all of that kind of uh, psyche out of your head that there isn't enough money out there. There isn't enough cash out there. There isn't, people aren't buying things right now. People are buying things. People are hiring people. People are building their companies and growing and investing in themselves and really trying to grow. So there are opportunities and there are revenues. So I really, really want to spend some time on this for you because this is how you not only grow, but you scale. Okay. And we're going to be talking about um, the book today, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And interestingly enough, on my podcast, The Entrepreneur Evolution, I'm going to do a little plug here. I had the co-author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is, it was, it was written in 1997. It's a 20 year old book, but it still rings true today. And it's a really kind of hard read to get through, but the principles and the basics of what they are conveying are so good and so gold. Um, but I'm going to kind of give you the Cliff Notes version of that today if you haven't read it. Um, but anyway, Sharon Lecter is the co-author of that. She's on my podcast at, that dropped yesterday, and she also wrote the book Rich and uh, Think Think and Grow Rich for Women. All right, so take a listen to that podcast um, if you can. You will learn a lot. She actually specializes in financial literacy, and she has been um, she's worked with Disney. She's worked with um, major companies. She's actually worked with two U.S. presidents. She worked with Bush and Obama. Um, so both sides of the spectrum there. And she's really just done um, um, really great impact with financial literacy as it relates to us understanding our psychology with money. Okay. So <clears throat> there are many different types of income models and cash flow models that you can have for your business, all right? There are different ways to set it up, okay? And oftentimes I get the question about, okay, how do you be, how are you able to do what you do? How do you have multiple businesses and, uh, you know, still show up and still have kids that, you know, they have their own challenges that a lot of you may know about behind the scenes with type one diabetes and HSP and all these different autoimmunes. How do you do it? Okay. And once we go through the model today of how I do it, it will make a lot of sense. So I really want you to be thinking on your business right now. You are showing up for this challenge. You carved out the time to be here for your business, to think on your business. So um, let's get started. Okay. Shall we? We shall. Shall we? We shall. I feel like one of those, um, Robert Palmer girls today. If I maybe had my hair back like this, I don't know if it's the red lips and the black. I don't know. Anybody? No? Halloween? Am I thinking about Halloween? Um, okay. I'm going to pull up a screen share here. And this is basically right, uh, from Rich Dad Poor Dad. This is the cash flow quadrant. Okay. Hopefully you all can see that. There are basically four different types of cash flow when you are talking about producing income. And that's why you were a business owner. That's why you are an entrepreneur. That's why you signed up for this to produce income. Your services, your expertise, what you do, how you spend your time is to produce income. I know that you're a really nice person. I know that people love you. It is okay to deliver value and have people invest in you and trade money for what you are doing, okay? So we're gonna talk about these different ways to produce income. Some of you may have seen this, some of you may not have seen this. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually going to break that down into some models. I have six models for you um, about different revenue opportunities that we're going to go through quickly at the end of this. So stick with me because I really want you to get this concept. Okay. So what this says is basically you can be an employee. Okay. You can be an employee and what an employee does is they show up, they work for someone else. They have a job, they trade their time for money. Okay. They trade their time for money. 
Next, you are self, you have down here self-employed, okay? That is all of the service-based businesses out there, the solopreneurs, the newer businesses, okay? A lot of the people that have one owner, typically it's an expert or practitioner who has graduated and put on the business owner hat, okay? You have the plumber that all of a sudden becomes owner of a plumbing business. You have the dentist that all of a sudden, expert dentist evolves into the business owner, okay? Different skill sets all together. And that is the biggest challenge for business owners is that you are experts in your field, but then once you put on that business owner hat, it's a whole different skill set and a whole different demand of your time and a whole different demand of your resources. And what typically happens is that those experts are doing the same thing that employees are doing for other people, but they are trading their time for money, okay? They are trading their time for money and there is no leverage there, okay? This is 95% of uh, the population, according to this chart, okay? So again, trading their time for money. This will only get you so far because there are only so many time, minutes in a day. There's only so much time that you have to trade your time for money. Okay, so that is a way to produce income. It works, it works, it works, okay? If you want it to work forever, you can make it work forever. If that's the model and the process that you like, you can. But if you want to scale your business, this is what people are talking about when they're talking about scaling their business, building their empire, okay? And really building around them. Okay, so they feel like they're not tied to their time and business, okay? You can go to the business owner piece, all right? And when you act as a business owner and are a business owner, you basically have people working with you for money, okay? So you've, you've duplicated, quadruplicated, triplicated, whatever the number is, you have amplified and scaled your business, okay? And the art, the process, the evolution of getting from sole practitioner, self-employed to business owner is life-changing. Life-changing, you are no longer tied to your business, okay? And I'm sorry, you are tied to your business, but your business isn't tied to you. Your business doesn't live and breathe and die by you having a good day, you having a bad day. You wanting to feel like you have to show up or don't have to show up, okay? It, when you're self-employed and you are here as a sole practitioner or as a sole operator, that is when your time is traded for dollars, okay? So I really want you to think about going from this box to this box, okay? And that's the process I take people down. That's the process I take people through. How can we scale, build, and grow your business and revenue so that the, you, don't own, you, know, you own the business, the business doesn't own you. You have financial freedom. You have personal freedom, okay? You're going back to that pre-entrepreneur self and you're saying, this is why I started the business. This is why I wanted to do this. And you actually get there, okay? You have to own a system. All right. And if you don't have a system and a process that works and a team that helps you hiring the right people um, and complementing your strengths and weaknesses is how you get there. OK. And then you have all these people actually working with you for the money and see how that pile grew. OK. And then the last quadrant is the investor. You own investments, okay? This is this is so port important. You own real estate, okay? You own um, commercial buildings. You own that's that's Sizzle. Sizzle's here with me today. I'll 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 bring him up in a second. He doesn't normally bark, um, but you actually have investments and they are passively creating income working for you, okay? So how do I do what I do, okay? For, with Timber Industries, you wanna say hi? Okay. For Timber Industries, I am a business owner. 
I have a team and they are awesome. Okay. We've grown this team. We've, um, I'd say since 2013, we've, we've definitely more than doubled. We've over doubled and then doubled again, our revenue size. Um, he's okay. Thanks. Um, and, and that's how that works. So we have a system, we have a process. I have, our team is working for us. Salespeople, uh, a generated process that works actively every day that if I am here with you, it's still working. Okay. And that's how I'm able to do the coaching. All right. If I am on vacation, timber industry still works. If I am, he's trying to play with my feet. Let me bring him up. Hold on. Okay. So that's how that works. I also live in the investor space. Okay. Come here, buddy. <laughs> Say hi, Sizzle. I also work in the investment space. Okay. So there are, we own commercial buildings, we own office buildings, and that income automatically generates. And that's how you go from entrepreneur to enterprise. That's how you grow your business and grow your company and you grow your empire. Okay. And that's where I want to take you guys. And that's where we're going. All right. So I want you to think about how to get from this visual, this quadrant to this quadrant. Okay. Um, and let me just see if we have any questions here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back to the main screen here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Great. So, all right. That's all good in theory, right? I want you to really understand that concept. If you want to get the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I actually have a copy that you can borrow or have. Um, just DM me. I'm happy to share it. But it is a really important thing for you to learn. And people are often sometimes so afraid to grow and afraid to scale or afraid to complement them services because what happens is they hire the wrong people and they get that wrong because they aren't hiring to build around what their weaknesses are and what their strengths are. And that is what is really the most important thing in, in building your business, okay? And building your team. I'm not spending you, saying you have to spend a gazillion dollars right now and go out there and hire five $60,000 people. That's not what this is about. But there are hiring strategies out there there are ways to bring in the right puzzle of 1099s, vendor, expert vendors, and complementary services, outsourced resources that you can make this work without having to invest a ton of money, okay? There are smart ways for you to grow. You can work smarter. You have to work smarter right now. I don't wanna see you working harder, okay? I wanna see you getting up and being juiced, like, oh my gosh, this is it. I love this. Okay. I wake every day, up every day. I'm like, I love this. This is so much fun. Like we are having so much fun here because we're continuing to evolve. We're continuing to grow. We're continuing to figure things out. And when a huge, massive, crazy economic um, storm comes at us, we're ready for it and we get through it. And, you know, I was a business owner. I was a owner of a residential real estate firm in 2008 and survived that storm. And we started off in 2007 with no crystal ball at all. And we wanted to, we read the blue ocean strategy. We want to do residential real estate differently. All residential uh, services under one roof, okay? The brokerage, the mortgage, the title, the financial services, the homeowner's insurance. 18,000 square feet. We put our names on personal leases. We had a wonderful line of credit from the bank. This was 2007, okay? Nobody had that crystal ball. 35 people on day one, and then 2008 hit, okay? I was having kids during this. No, that was 20, 10, 2010. Um, and 2008 hit, okay? And we had no, um, we, we, we just had to grow through it. We really had to grow through it. And people will make moves when they are scared. And what happens was we were able to recruit and build 
And people came to us because we were an awesome culture to work with. So fast forward to 2012, we had 17 locations and we had over 300 plus people and 20 million in revenue and all of the time, cash flow management, sales, and I was talking behind the scenes, I was the chief operating officer where all of my operational kind of expertise comes in. You know, we didn't have an off the shelf product. We didn't have a franchise. We were building it, now growing it, building it, now growing it, figuring it out. And um, we were talking to investors behind the scenes because we didn't know when this real estate market was going to rebound. So we ended up selling to Prudential and then it was bought by Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company. So when you see the Berkshire Hathaway signs, on the streets, that's the footprint that my former company, I was the, um, there were eight partners. I was the only female and I was the youngest of eight male partners. So eight partners total. So it was an awesome experiment, experience, but those were sleepless nights. That was um, working through a team and, and working to build, um, to really get through and survive, okay? So I really want you to understand that there are so many different ways to navigate and find the opportunities and get through things, okay? You will find a way out. You will find a way through the next thing. You will find a way to land on your feet, but you just have to try. You just have to keep on going. You just have to show up and really be in love with your business. And I want that for you, okay? I really, really want that for you, okay? So... The process of going from trading your time for money to actually having a team of people work for the money and bring the money in and business owner is, is um, it's amazing. It's amazing when you can have that happen. And every service-based business is able to do that, okay? I'm going to talk about some models right now um, that are really going to help you in your business. And I'm going to also... The point of this session is to spark creative creativity, is to get you thinking about that concept in the back of your head as a way that you will scale your business, okay? That visual in the back of your head, and I'm going to kind of give you some tactical pieces on how to start to do that, all right? And here's an exercise that's actually in our homework today that we're going to do. All right, there is the process of brainstorming. The process of brainstorming is a basic business 101 concept that always proves opportunistic. It always brings out something advantageous, okay? And here is the brainstorming activity for you and your team. If you do not have a team right now, I want you to find whomever are your advisors in your life right now to do this with you, okay? And by advisors, hopefully you have a solid relationship with your accountant, with your banker, with your lawyer, with your HR person, okay? And if you don't have that kind of small advisory board around you of trusted people, then, then you call in the next sphere of people, okay? Best friend, spouse, and trusted mom or dad, okay? And then this is the process of the brainstorming of what you're going to do, right? You are going to ask them to come up with 20 new products or services in your business right now that you can do right now. 20 new products or services that you can offer right now as your business stands, as it is right now. You know your product, you know your service, okay? What are 20 things that could bring revenue into the door that you could do right now, okay? And why 20, all right? There is a really great Simon Sinek. You all know that I'm obsessed with Simon Sinek, okay? His cute little glasses and his funky little hair and his like soft, soothing voice, right? Um, He's the author of The Power of Why. And again, another book that I have that I'm happy to loan out if anybody wants it. Um, I, you know, I, I read the actual books. So. Um, so Simon Sinek, he is the one that is suggesting uh, 20, 15 to 20, I say 20. 
um, and for, to do it with various people on your teams, all right? So why 20? If you only give them three or four, then all of you are going to have the same three or four, okay? Chances are all of you will have the same three or four. But when you get to the five to 10, to the 10 to 15, to the 15 to 20, that's when the creativity really starts to happen. It's just like when you start to journal and you're like, I don't really have anything to write about today. And then before you know it, you just have written a couple pages and it felt so good, okay? So the creative process of brainstorming and asking them for 20 things, 20 revenue streams, 20 products or services, 20 new things in the business that could work as revenue will get you there. It will start that creativity with your team and then bring them and you go last. You don't share first, okay? You don't share first because if you share first, you take away the autonomy from the team. You take away the ownership from the team because then it's your idea, it's not their idea. And we're breeding autonomy and ownership always and constantly on our team. We want them to feel like rock stars. We want them to come up with another idea next time when we don't even ask, right? Okay, so have that, um, assign them the, the challenge, the task, however fun you wanna do it. And maybe even whose idea gets chosen gets, you know, uh, night out on the COVID town, right? Um, so, so make that a fun thing. Come up with 20 new revenue streams, okay? That is a way to start right now, all right? And chances are you might find a blend, um, but you have to be willing. You have to be willing to, to be creative and to accept these new revenue streams into your business to complement your services, okay? Um, and, uh, Here's what I'm gonna guide you with as far as the models go, all right? Six different models. Um, six different models in your business that maybe some you are doing now, maybe some you haven't thought about, maybe some you really just have shied away from in the past, and now, since we are more digital, more Zoom, Zoomers, we're, we're Zoomers, have you thought about that? Should we coin that? Should we coin that? We're Zoomers. Everybody's Zooming. Um, the, the ball game's changed. You know, the, 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 the field has changed a little bit. Like there, anything can happen right now. You can, you can work with somebody in Australia right now, okay? Your audience, if you know specifically to whom you are speaking, which we talked about two days ago, your, your, your canvas just got that much bigger, okay? Your pool of fish just got that much bigger, okay? But if you're, you have to know exactly who you're talking to. Once you know exactly who you're talking to, this is why sales are not happening for you. I'm gonna tell you why sales aren't happening for you. You are not making offers, okay? If you know exactly the person that you were talking to, if you know exactly who your audience is, okay? Remember I said that your ideal client is you, right? All right, your ideal client is you. If you, aren't talk, if you are talking to your ideal client, you really have that, that down and sales are not coming in, it's because you are not making clear offers. You are not making offers. You need to be making an offer every single day in your business, okay? Clear offers. And that's, that's what you have to be doing, okay? Clear offers. Um, I just, obviously we just got a dog, okay? I go to this dog walking uh, site and I go on the site. It is the best website I've seen in a long time, okay? First of all, I haven't even talked, I haven't even spoken to a person yet, all right? So she, her name came to me through word of mouth, word of mouth, which is the most powerful form of marketing, okay? It costs nothing. Okay, you can start with one person. Okay, you don't need followers of a gazillion people. You don't have to have a social media presence of 10 million people. You're starting with one person. One person. Who knows doing that? One person. Okay, so her name came to me from um, one person, and I go to her website. It says, you know, do, are you trying to train a puppy who's seven months old? or older or seven months and younger, seven months and younger. Then I go right into 
um, and her menu of services come up, okay? Phone consult, um, you know, puppy 101 or puppy day camp, all right? Like, do you want just the, do you want, do you want to just have a phone call and be like, hey, am I doing this right? Or do you want to have the, I'll come to you and we can hang out at your house and for a couple hours and do this? Or do you want me to take the dog and like get the dog okay because you can't, you're not there yet or you don't have the time to do that, okay? She made me three offers just like that. And I haven't even spoken to this woman. Do you see how she is turning her business into being a business owner and scaling her business, creating an automated process without me even talking to her yet? Okay, she's duplicated herself not through the team of people, but through technology and the, the revenue, the technology uh, services that are out there right now, okay? So I want you to really, really, really get your offers down, okay? Get your offers down. I recommend having three solid offers, okay? I, I always talk about the dentist. Is it a cavity? Is it a crown or is it a root canal? If it's a cavity, you get this. If it's a crown, you get this. If it's a root canal, you get this, okay? Some people do silver, gold, platinum. Some people do ABC. Some people do whatever, okay? But you have to be offering different things. Here at IEVOV Consulting, I do the one-to-one -one intensive coaching, okay? One-to-one -one intensive coaching with the business owner, with the partnership, with whomever, but that's the one-to-one, -one, okay? That's the deep intensive work, all right? I also do our membership coaching, all right? Every other Thursday, I have a live session. It's more interactive than this, but we have a live coaching session every other Thursday where that business owner, that network of business owners show up together. They've created this awesome, just camaraderie, friendship, like they support each other. Okay, and we spend an hour and a half on the phone every other Thursday, and I talk about a really pressing leadership topic. They lift their head in their business, and then they go back to work, okay? And that is, that's what works for them. They need the community. They need to show up. They need to be held accountable. And actually, every time we end that call, they, they put something out to the universe, and they say, next time by this call, I want this to happen and it keeps the momentum. And then I offer programs, okay? I offer my Entrepreneur Evolution Program, where it's you know an eight week intensive session, but those are only sporadic throughout the year, okay? But it's really, you know, with the strategic plan for 2021, you need the help for that, that's the crash course there, okay? So what models can you make for your offers, okay? You are not, the, the sales aren't coming in, the revenues aren't coming in because you do not have clear offers. And I want you to create three clear offers because confused buyers do not buy. Confused buyers do not buy. If, if you're saying, well, okay, somebody comes to you, let, let, let me give you this example. Let's say you go into a restaurant, okay, pre-COVID. You go into a restaurant and you sit down and the waitress walks up to you and says, hey, how you guys doing? You're like, we're good. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. What would you all like to eat today? And you look at the waitress and said, I don't know. Do you have a menu? What's on the menu? Oh, we don't have menus here. You know, it, it, what do you feel like? Do you want, do you want steak? Do you want seafood? I can see if, you know, maybe the chef can do a, do a salmon in the back. What do you want? Okay. Maybe, maybe, oh, you want some fettuccine Alfredo? Okay. I think, yeah, I'll do that for you. I can do that for you. All right. So it's, you, you need to have a menu. You need to know that because guess what? That restaurant that doesn't have the menu, they have to keep so much more inventory. They are not specializing and niched in everything. When's the last time you went to like a, a smorgasbord, right? You normally go out for Italian or go out for sushi or go out for burgers, right? You go out for a specific thing. You're not going out to, so that you can have a mashed potato with a crab cake. Well, no, maybe a, I, you know what I'm saying though, okay? A piece of sushi and a crab cake and then a, something else, right? A lobster tail, no. So if, 
you just need to have that interaction. So when the waitress brings over the things, you know, the menu, somebody understands exactly what they can get. Okay. Oh, you have this. That's great. It's my favorite done. Okay. All right. And a great waitress, a great salesperson says, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I love and in love and I love that you're going to do that. This is the best wine to go with it. Would you like that too? But we're not going to talk about all that right now because I'm trying not to bombard you with too much information, but I'm trying to give you so much. I'm trying to give you so much. Okay. So confused buyers do not buy. So if somebody comes into your store, okay, even if you're service-based or you don't have a product, you're service-based, you still have a store, okay? That dog walker, their store is, okay, you start, you open up the door, you go to my website, and this is how I lead you through my store, okay? If we're not leading our clients, our ideal clients into our store and giving them that experience, feeling us from every single angle, and then offering them exactly what they want and why they called us the expert, okay? You are the expert. They, they, don't, they can't do what you can do. I can't train a dog, okay? She's the expert. I don't know what she knows. I, I wanna pay her because I don't know that, okay? You are the expert. You guys, you are the only ones. You think that everybody else knows this stuff, but only you know this, okay? Only you know this. You are the only one that's the rock star in your space, okay? So make clear offers so that they aren't confused and they do buy from you and the sales start to happen. And then you scale your team and become a business owner and you buy something that gives you passive income and then you're sitting on a beach somewhere and the business is working for you. You've developed wealth, you've created an empire and that's how it works, okay? But it's a process, you have to show up, you have to put it in, you have to figure it out, you have to plan, you have to go, have the strategy. Okay, who's with me? I have no idea because I can't see any comments. I'm so sorry. Um, okay, so let's talk about some models, all right? We're gonna talk about some models here, all right? The first is basically your, your, um, your services, okay? Trading your services for that. And I'm talking about when we're in this, in the mode that most of you are in right now, which is the self-employed trading your time for money. Okay. How do we create different revenue sources that work without you trading your time for money? Um, so the, the first is probably where you are. And with that, if you are an attorney, you're trading your time for money. If you are a dentist, you're trading your time for money. Okay. I really want you to think about your value and think about how you are associating your time, I really want you to steer away from hourly because the value and the outcome that you are providing is invaluable. The results and the outcome and how you are able to help people sincerely and get them and help them to attain their goal is, is you should not be quantified by your an hourly rate, okay? You will show up differently if you really create a package where your service is delivered differently, okay? So if you say, oh, I can give you an hour of my time for X amount of dollars, at, it needs to be more of an experience, okay? So that service, when you are in the service place of things, it needs to be different, okay? So the first model is that really that traditional model, okay, the service-based. But what I want you to do is make it value-based, okay, and not hourly, okay? All right? So a lot of you fall in this category, and that is already what you have as your product. I just want you to repackage it differently, okay? The next model for revenue is live workshops and live experiences, okay? We all are Zooming. So live workshops and live experiences, okay? I know a lot of people out here in the community right now 
are experts in their unique space, okay? And when you are able to deliver valued content and valued information, again, that only you know in the form of a live workshop, you can create that as another revenue source. And I'll give an example. A lot of times this works really well for, um, for um, B2B, okay? So those of you that work with corporations, those of you that I know some of you out there are selling executive training to corporations, okay? So what is your offer, okay? If they're confused, they're not gonna buy. But if you're not offering, then sales aren't coming in. So who is your win? Who do you want to go after? Let's say you want to pick up a Coca-Cola. Okay, we're going big here. You pick up a Coca-Cola. All right. Who do you know on LinkedIn or who knows who on LinkedIn that you can talk to that knows somebody at Coca-Cola? Who can you pick up the phone and say, how are things going? What is your biggest struggle right now? Where does management need help? Okay, I'm an executive trainer, but I just don't want to offer you something that you don't need that I think you need. I need to know what you need. Okay, so, so what's the pain points? Oh, what's so funny because we just had this person who came in and did this seminar, but really it didn't, it didn't really sync with anybody because we don't really need that. Um, so you have to ask for feedback. You have to gain feedback. You have to gain and solicit feedback about what their pain points are and create that experience for them around that. Okay, let's say you're working in the space of nonprofit. Okay, nonprofit, have that conversation. You know, it's interesting that we're on the phone today, Mr. Nonprofit. I actually have been doing a ton of workshops and a ton of, of live experiences, and I think it'd be really valuable to you. Tell me what's going on with you guys. Like, where, where do you need the help? Oh, it's funny you should just ask this because we were just talking about this the other day. We were looking for somebody to help us um, really promote morale in a virtual team. Our team's been virtual now since March and they're feeling it. And we don't know how to keep them collaborating. Is that something you talk on? It is, actually it is, right? But send over the package, send over the offer as a project, not an hourly, and there is your revenue and your stream, okay? The next one is courses and programs, okay? The courses and programs, again, I'm gonna to go to this example of um, Timber Industries. This is something right now that we are actually really, really, really considering for Timber Industries as a revenue source, okay? I do, I, I have a program, a program with iEvolve Consulting that is, it makes a huge impact on business owners day to day, on their strategic planning, on their tactical handholding, everything, okay? It's been, so powerful and so productive and it's awesome. So we thought about <clears throat> how about if we take something like that, a program to Timber Industries. The challenge at Timber Industries is that our buyer is buying a pallet, okay, a wood pallet. They don't really know a lot about pallets, okay? They don't know how to measure a pallet. They don't know the dimensions of a pallet. They don't know that a shimmy on a dimension of a pallet could really break your inventory and have it fall on somebody's head in a warehouse. Or you can't stack your inventory so high or stack another pallet. There's so much to pallets that I could tell you that you know we would have a whole other day about it, but I won't bore you. <laughs> but we were thinking, and this was actually thoughts from my team when I went through the brainstorming exercise. What if we offered a program to the purchasing agent or manager that educated them on how to measure, build, buy, what to look for in a pallet, and then they are using that, okay? They're using that program to educate internally, all right? Because what happens is there's turnover in that position so frequently because nobody wants to deal with the pallet spend. And you know, Coca-Cola, to go back to them, they have a $90 million pallet spend. And that position for that purchasing agent has been turned over six times in the past seven years, okay? So every time I'm trying to talk to the purchasing manager and every time a new purchasing manager comes in, 
I might lose that spend because she might have her best friend that's a palette, you know, supplier. But if I am offering them these different things, if I'm educating them and they are investing with me, okay, they will be more tied to me. They will trust me more. People buy from people that they know, like, and trust, okay? And that's dealing with a commodity-based product, a commodity-based business where people will leave you for a penny, a penny, okay? And a penny on $90 million adds up, okay? All right, so that's courses and programs. So what can you teach? What can you teach? You know, it, somebody out there the other day, this was an amazing story, is a runner, okay? And he just liked to run and he started a running podcast and he interviewed other runners. And now he's a sponsored runner with a program uh, running for beginners, running for intermediate, training for a marathon. He created all of these different things, but he was a runner. He just had a passion for it and he could only coach so many people and run with so many people one-to-one. -one. But once he created those different programs, it scaled him, it amplified his business, okay? All right, the next is the memberships and the subscriptions, all right? So this is something that will create revenue and residual revenue, reoccurring revenue in your business, okay? What value can you give your clients on a monthly basis? What value can you have them signed up? And typically these, well, I say that, but th this can range anywhere from $8 a month, $2 a month, uh, obviously higher volume, up to you know, a couple thousand dollars a month, depending on what your offer is and what the value is. So what can you give them monthly, daily, that they need, that they want, that they will show up with you, okay? Memberships are a great model for income. The next is the coaching. Um, I'll give the example of um, you coaching in your business, all right? I work with lots of financial planning teams um, and sales leads and teams. And um, I have one who has been an experienced financial planner for many, many years. And they've got a great book of business with reoccurring revenue, okay? Every year the book renews, the book is creating revenue, it's generating income. So they have that going. And I was on a coaching call the other day and I said, have you ever considered coaching other financial planners? Have you ever considered coaching other financial planners with how you got to this point? Your wisdom, your knowledge, your systems, your process, your client approach. You know, your approach on how you walk people through your store, okay? And, uh, you know, the light bulb goes off and next thing you know, it's like, oh, well, I do have this network of people and they've been asking me about that. And I do have this network that, in fact, you know what? The other day I had two new financial planners ask me about that. Okay. So package it and offer it, okay? And all you have to do is start with one to get it going. And then they will tell the next person, next, tell the next person, okay? The next one is um, a product, okay? A, an actual product, an actual physical product to complement your services. And there are so many amazing um, examples here that I have, um, you know, there, <laughs> There, I was on this uh, coaching call the other day and um, there's a woman who actually has a course in place where she um, works with children and anxiety, okay? So she helps children and anxiety and she would ask the children, everything's been virtual lately, but she would ask um, the children to draw out how they would see themselves as a doll, okay? So how they would see themselves as their own cute little doll. And so she created a, a product where she actually makes that doll for the child. And guess what? The mom buys it and it's not cheap. And it is a, an amazing impact and experience for that family and for that daughter and for that child. 
because they feel connected. They know, they remember the call. They remember this woman helping her at night, the, the tactics and the coping mechanisms that they told him. She made a product to complement her service, okay? Her service, okay? So that's what I mean by product. I'm not saying go out there and um, make a widget and have to have you know this whole manufacturing line, okay? You can start with one, start simple, okay? Everybody, Sarah Blakely started with a pair of cutoff nylons, okay? You know I love her. A pair of cutoff nylons. She's like, hey, what do you guys think about this? Can't see my, you can't see my like dimples in my butt through my white, my white pants, right? She started off like that, asking for feedback. Would you, would you do this? Would you wear this? Do you need this? Yes, I'm yeah. Okay. All right. So the products. Okay. And then the next um, flow, I think I, I think I said more than six, it might be seven, but um, the next thing is to uh, create your revenue and revenue streams through um, different types of um, income streams that are generated from books and blogs and podcasts and um, those types of things, okay? YouTube channels, okay? Through that type of, uh, of a thing. I put that into one category. Um, there's probably one word that really summarizes it or sums it up that's not coming to me right now, but really generating that kind of passive income that comes once you've grown those platforms to a certain level, okay? But again, you have to start small, okay? You have to start small. Podcasting is a great way to grow your audience, a great way to help your audience, a great way to support your audience, a great way to like give huge shout outs to your audience and, and, and like just learn from them and grow with them, you know? Um, so think about that, okay? And that could be something that could be on your 2021 planning. Um, that maybe, it, and, and those things honestly aren't as hard as you think once you break them down. Podcasting is not as hard as you think once you break it down and get the, pro, po, uh, the posting. YouTube, when you show up and you know it and you know the system and you're posting consistently with the right team of videographers and growing it, um, you can outsource that to, you know, outside um, for very nominal cost and get things like that going, okay? Um, and, and, and writing a book. They say that once you have 20 podcast episodes, then you have enough content for a book, okay? So those things start to really build and grow off of, off of each other. And they're great ways to do branding and, and great ways to talk to your ideal client, great ways to help and impact your ideal client, okay? And they can bring, bring in with the ads small revenue, okay? Or big revenue, sometimes it just depends. Um, Okay, so those are the different models, all right? So what in the world did we just cover and go through? It was a lot in a quick amount of time. I normally spend hours on this and we did it in 51 minutes, okay? So let me just rewind and recap and then we'll talk about the homework. We started off with the concept from Rich Dad Poor Dad. If you just look at the Rich Dad Poor Dad, Google it rich dad, poor dad quadrant. Um, and it, it gives you that illustration. Okay. About time and money, building your income, building your business, building your wealth, building your empire. Okay. Going from that self-employed to business owner. Okay. When you own the business, the business doesn't own you. Okay. Conceptually, I want that in the back of your head as your evolution. How do you get there? How do you build there? Okay. Then we talked about confused buyers do not buy. Okay. Confused buyers do not buy. And if sales are not coming in, if revenue is not coming in, it's because you are not making clear offers. Okay. And do not offer the whole smorgasbord. Okay make clear offers for what exactly your ideal client wants. If you haven't asked them, ask them. Ask three or four of your clients. Like, you know, um, even if you think about the ideas from one of these models and say, if I offered this, would you like this? Google Forms, 
is the easiest way to get this kind of feedback, okay? Google Forms, you can create any kind of form in Google. It's amazing, okay? <laughs> I know a lot of you probably know that, but it was just, I, I looked at it the other day and played with it the other day because I was asking feedback. And it's like, you can like do multiple choice. You can do yes or no, you can do this. Ask your best clients some things. Don't be afraid to ask. Take that 20 seconds of insane courage and just ask. They will say, oh my God, yes, I will help you. Of course I will help you. I will. What do you want to do? Let's, let's carve out time and just be vulnerable and ask for feedback, okay? But half the time, what we do as entrepreneurs is guess what? We spend a lot of time in that kitchen making the cake and baking the cake, all right? And guess what? Then we, then we go out and we serve the cake. We have a vanilla cake. They want a chocolate. Nobody eats the cake, okay? I don't want that to happen to you anymore. All right, then we went through the quick different models, okay? Your service, all right? Going from the hourly to the value project approach, delivering on those results and the outcome, okay? Not physically trading your time for money anymore, getting out of that psychology, okay? Because you will deliver more, you will show up differently, and they will gain more from it if it is a value-based price, okay? Um, talking about live workshops and live experiences, all right? Creating those as a revenue for your business. Talking about courses and programmings. What can you teach, okay? What can you teach? Memberships. What would your clients want to sign up for from you monthly to get, okay? All right? Um, coaching. Who can you coach, all right? Talking about the financial planner that got to a certain point in their career, had the financial book of business, and then they started coaching and teaching other financial, passing on their wisdom, okay? Passing on their experience, all right? You know, that, that's why I coach. Okay, you heard about what I went through in 2018, 20, 2008, all right? I, I never hire a business coach unless they have lived and breathed the sleepless nights, unless they've owned, started, operated, acquired, bought, sold businesses, okay? I don't need the textbook business in a box person that's gonna say, um, you should do this. This is your, da, 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 da. no, no, doesn't work for me, okay? And I've worked with a coach since 2009, so always a prerequisite. So you have the knowledge, you have the wisdom. You can coach people who are starting out in your industry and help them, okay? You can. Look at what you've done so far. Look at what you've built, okay? Pass on your knowledge, do that. It's, it's invaluable, all right? And then we also talked about creating product, all right? And we talked about the, um, the uh, uh, woman who had a program that worked with anxiety and children and how the child made the doll and then she actually physically made the doll and, and, and it was her product that the family could buy, all right, as a part of her service, all right? Another stream form of income. And then we talked about content creation, okay? Making money off of your content, YouTube, podcasts, books, okay? The content creation. Once you start to get the ads going, that is a longer path, but in the, mean, in the midst of that, you can be sharing your content. ABG, always be generous and building your content, and then hopefully one day those ads will come in and be, you know, be a little bit of income for you, okay? All right, so I hope today was helpful. Our homework today, okay? What business model that I, res that I put here, and I'm gonna list all of them in the notes, actually in the comments of the replay today. Um, what business model resonated with you? Re sorry, resonates, resonates with you. I put a G in there, I don't know why. Um, and then schedule a creative brainstorming session with your team, all right? The, the 20 things, 20 new revenue sources that would work in your business right now that are opportunities at your fingertips, that if you solicited some feedback and packaged it and offered it, that would be revenue right now into your business for quarter four, okay? And then what new offer can you create? All right, what offer do you wanna create? Let's create an offer. Let's, let's make it, you know, put an offer together. 
find something and put a pretty little bow. And again, if you do not feel comfortable posting in the private Facebook group, then DM me. I will look at it for you. I will work through it with you, okay? And think about that, that cavity, crown, root canal, okay? Boom, boom, boom. You can have A, B, or C, okay? Maybe once you go to B, you need C. Maybe once you start off with a consult call, you realize that you need C. Who knows, okay? Um, and then, uh, you know, the last piece is what, what excited you about today's session? What rang true for you? What hit you today? Because remember, it, if I say it, it's just because it lives in you and you know it already. You know it already. And that's why it hits you, okay? All right? When I say it, it's because it's already living in you and you know it. I'm just here to help you. It's what I do. It's what I do and I'm growing and evolving with you. I'm proud of you and you all are so amazing. And I can't wait to be with you tomorrow. Tomorrow is day four. And tomorrow we are talking about the mini map, okay? So the mini map is what's going to help you through quarter four, okay? So I really want you to be thinking about your revenue streams and your offers for quarter four. Get clear on your offers. Confused buyers do not buy. Let's bring in some revenue in the door in quarter four. Let's kick this year in the tail. Let's finish strong. There's no reason why you can't. There's no reason why you shouldn't. There's no reason why you don't deserve to, okay? So hands in, let's go. Keep evolving. Great job today. Lots of content today. Lots of content. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you soon. Wow. What an episode. Did you learn something new? I hope so. I am so happy you were able to be here with us today. I'd love to hear from you. Leave me a review and I will be sure to read it and respond to you. Also, if you'd like to email me, my email address is urock at iEvolveConsulting.com. Hit subscribe and every Tuesday you'll get notification when the next episode drops. We really have some amazing interviews and tips in the future. Anything you need, I'm here for you. I want you to keep your momentum. I want to help you stay accountable. I want you to stay inspired. I want you to evolve. So please let me know what you need and I'd love to hear from you. Take care until next time.